Well, we are we are super excited to have you on with us today because this uh, show is so cool. And uh, you know, the further and further we get down uh, in on it, we just we just love it more and more. And you're probably getting all this good feedback right now. So it's kind of nice because you know I know you work on so much, and this is probably even a couple of things ago, right? <laughs> yeah, it's definitely really nice to uh, see the show come out. And you know, it was a long time in the making. I think I was probably working on the show for about a year or maybe even more than that so it was really nice to see it come out into the world and get people's feedback you know and it's it's lovely to see that people are excited and, and enjoying the show mm -hmm. and you probably couldn't say hardly anything about it while you were working on it right no i couldn't say anything about it then <laughs> and i also even now i'm like oh which episode has come out i don't want to say things oh, about yeah. the story of the show <laughs> There's so much still to come. Yeah. Were you a big uh, Godzilla and monster movie fan growing up? Uh, I mean, I was always aware of Godzilla, as I think everybody is. Mm -hmm. You know, he's he's literally that iconic that every single mm -hmm. person in the world <laughs> yeah. knows what Godzilla is. So, you know, I wouldn't... Since I've been working on the show and since I've started to do interviews and me yeah. fans i start to realize what a deep and passionate culture it is and that's amazing yeah, so yeah. i would never say that i'm a fan on the level that some people are fans of kaiju and the whole thing like it's there's fans and there's fans like yeah. i obviously yeah. i love i love godzilla but um there's other people who really take it to the next yeah. level and i think that's amazing yeah, absolutely. Now, uh, the music in it is so cool. And I was curious about what, what was the music in, in maybe a movie or TV show when, when you were younger that kind of drew you to, you know, that, that you first really started to notice that. Maybe it didn't start playing music, but just something that you were just like, oh, that's really cool. That's a good question. I, I would say probably um, Manhunter, the Michael Mann movie, Manhunter. Mm -hmm. and was definitely I think it was like those kind of synth leaning scores of the 80s like Halloween and and the mm -hmm. stuff in Manhunter and also um David Shire's score for The Conversation which is a 70s mm -hmm. movie so it was like mm -hmm. some of these uh I guess earlier more electronic leaning scores made me think oh wow this is really cool like it makes me feel a certain way you know yeah yeah that's so cool well now of course people are looking up to you and going that's what i want to do and, you know and, and it's certainly much much harder than it looks but uh what what kind of advice do you give to people that are that are wanting to follow in your footsteps um i would probably honestly say let your naivety work in your favor you know i mean i think that when i first was getting into it I just did what I thought would be cool <laughs> without yeah. necessarily worrying about what should be happening, you know, from a sort of film score technique perspective, you know what I mean? And I think the era that we live in now, there's so much content, there's so many different styles of shows. I think people's ears are a lot more used to different mm. stuff, you know what I mean? Like it doesn't, have to be you know the orchestra whereas you know i think 80s and 90s i would say such a huge percentage of entertainment was purely orchestral score whereas nowadays it's so much more broad so i think that i guess just trust in your own aesthetic and don't worry so much about oh should it be like this should it be like that make it make it your thing yeah, absolutely. Well said. You know, uh, my co-host Drew Pearson uh, is is uh, one of our Dallas Cowboys greats, one of our you know NFL greats. Uh, caught the hail mary, and we all know the hail mary term now. And we love to ask people that hail mary moment, which is that moment in your life or career where you just had to go for it, and it worked out for you. What do you suppose that was for you? Um, probably. I don't know. I would say maybe moving to America. I'm English, yeah. you know, uh, mm -hmm. and I was working in music 
from a young age, but uh, then the opportunity came up to move over here to Los Angeles. And even though I didn't know anyone really here or anything about the, the culture particularly, I just thought, you know, this is where I want to be. And I was already kind of leaning towards making instrumental music. So I thought well, maybe like, who knows, we'll see what happens. So I kind of took a leap of faith to come here. Um, and that was 20 years ago now. So it was, you yeah, know, right. I guess that was probably a Hail Mary moment because I definitely didn't know how it was going to work out. And I also, you know, in the back of my mind, I was thinking I could be back in England in six months time. We'll see what happens, you know? Yeah. Well, it's been really cool to watch you and your brother just, just rise and do like such great things and, and, uh, and also now be able to work together and that's fun, right? Yeah. Super fun working with him. I always look forward to doing projects with him because really that's been such a constant in my life. You know, he's a little bit older than me. So when I was first getting into music, starting to learn to play guitar and stuff, he was already, he had a little studio in London. So I used to just go and like sit in the back of the room and just kind of like absorb what was going on, you know, and then eventually I started, he said, Oh, why don't you play guitar on this? And then we kind of got into a working relationship. So um, it's always a, it's always a thrill to work with him just because we have such a such a close relationship in terms of music like it's very uh it's very non-verbal like we don't really need to talk we can just kind of we know what each other is thinking and we can just kind of let it flow yeah i love that now uh but part of it is you know you what you're what you're doing i'm i guess you've, you've got the magic there behind you but but it's a very isolated uh, job that you're doing and, and you know we're as creative people we're notoriously hard on ourselves is there something that you tell yourself that kind of keeps you on that right path and keeps you going even when things are tough it's a good question it is definitely you touch on a word that isolating it is very isolating particularly in the um, composing lane there's a lot of lonely hours spent <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if there's anything I tell myself, but I do try and um, more and more, I try and like find little moments where I can step away and, uh, you know, like take my dog for a walk or do yeah. something like to just come out, get out of the headspace for a minute, because mm -hmm. I find that that's more effective than, you know, banging my head against the wall. You know, often if I can take a little break, then I can come back in and I'll be more like, oh yeah, we just need to do, a, B, and C, and it's really not, it's not the drama that I had set it up to be in my head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it is kind of interesting. I don't think people always understand, you know, what it looks like when you're doing this, but, um, you know, of course, you, you know, you get something on a screen usually, but uh, with this, I, I don't know how much of it was done. I mean, was, did you actually see Godzilla or did you just see sort of like, okay, here's where he's going to be a little tennis ball or wherever it is that they filmed it. Uh, they use a lot, um, things called animatics, which is yeah. sort of like, uh, an animated rendering of what they yeah. think the scene's mm -hmm. going to look like. <laughs> so <laughs> it's kind of challenging in that perspective because it's definitely what I learned during the course of the show is it's not exactly what the, what yeah. the yeah. scene's going to look like. Of course it's not because... <laughs> there's so many different variables so it's sort of like you have to do a little bit of um leaving it a little bit broad strokes in when mm -hmm. you when you're in that stage or so okay well i can see what's going on in the scene and i can kind of get a general tempo going but until i get those visual effects much closer to being finished I won't be able to get it really tight with the with the cuts and stuff. So, um, but yeah, it's definitely challenging in that perspective and sort of not knowing exactly what it's mm -hmm. going to be. You know, if that's an, an, yeah. an element of uncertainty that you don't always. Uh, it's not mm -hmm. you know, it's difficult. 
Yeah. Uh, do, do you ever go back and watch, uh, you know, what, what you've done and go, oh, that's what it looked like? <laughs> no idea. <laughs> <laughs> with this show, I with this show, I definitely have watched a couple of episodes on broadcast just because, A, I wanted to see what it sounded like coming out of a TV. And B, what you say is true. Like visual effects take so long that mm -hmm. there's uh some episodes where like i don't think i saw the final visual effect when mm -hmm. when we were mixing the episode so it's like i want to see the actual yeah. final version you know <laughs> but i've been really um pleasantly uh surprised i'm not surprised but like the level of quality of the visual effects i think is super high end uh, and it looks fantastic so it's great to see that yeah and what a cool show too i mean it, you know now of course like i said you you know this is one you probably could go back and watch as much different than, than what you were watching yeah it, do you have a particular memory working on the on the on the show that you're just kind of like oh this is going to be really cool i wish i could talk about this um probably like honestly you know i i signed on to do the show and for some reason i hadn't really considered the scale of the show i mean i talked to um the showrunner chris black and mm -hmm. uh some of the producers and i understood that it was the monster verse and i was excited to do that but i hadn't seen anything and then they sent me i believe the first thing i saw was part of episode one where kate arrives in tokyo you see her landing at the airport and then there's some flashbacks to Godzilla and I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> like, <when> I saw <laughs> Godzilla on the stage, on the screen. I was like, oh my God, like suddenly it hit me like, this is crazy. So that was really, really exciting. And that was kind of like a catalyst for my writing. Like when I saw that, I was like, I got so excited by the opportunity to be able to make music for such an icon like Godzilla that I really uh just started uh the the creative juices started flowing from there and um actually i kind of like put the main title together just that was one of the first things i wrote it just came i think mm. in that wave of excitement i just did that Ah, oh, it's cool and then of course you get to see kurt russell there which is like a big part of our childhood movies so that's kind of cool you know yeah it was yeah. it was super cool seeing kurt russell and wyatt Russell plays yeah. it. Well, right, I think great. it's kind of a unique spin that the show has. And mm -hmm. um, I think they do an excellent job kind of bringing that like action adventure swagger to the character. You know yeah. what I mean? Mm -hmm. No, nah, it's so cool. And so now, of course, after hearing this I'm, and seeing it, um, I'm, I'm very curious and excited to know what you're working on next. Um, I have a. Uh, there's a show called Shogun, which comes out in uh, February, which I'm really excited about. It's a big um, ancient Japanese epic. Yes. Uh, I, I mean, they made it in the 80s. This is like a remake of that. The James show. Clavel novel, I believe, right? That, that yeah. novel. And it's the scale and the attention mm -hmm. to detail and the level of production is really off the charts. I mean, it looks stunning. So I'm super excited uh, for the release of that. And I did that one with Atticus as well. So that was fun. Okay. We recorded a lot of um, traditional Japanese instruments and then uh, put our spin on it, put our effects on them. So it's a, it's a super fun score. Oh, that's great. Well, then last thing, then, of course, you know, on that same note, uh, you, you always have to find ways to keep things interesting and challenge yourself and well, offer the score. What was uh, the thing that you did that was kind of like, oh, this is this is different for me. Uh, for for Monarch? Gonna, yeah, for, for Monarch, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, well, I think the thing for me was like, I wanted to make sure that and this is something that we spoke about with the producers as well. Like, yeah. how do we keep it within the aesthetic of MonsterVerse, but also mm -hmm. give it our own spin and make it uniquely its own thing? So from, from, a, from a musical perspective, I wanted to kind of lean a little bit more into my 
uh, electronic sensibilities just because I felt like that's something that you haven't seen a lot of with within the Godzilla canon. You know, obviously some incredible composers have worked on the Godzilla movies uh, in recent times, uh, but it's all kind of lent a little bit more orchestral. So I thought for, for my take, I want to do things, something that um, uh, is a little bit electronic, but also aggressive, you know, kind of has the kind of uh, hard edge that I thought could be cool to really kind of amp up those Titan battle sequences and stuff like that. Yeah, I love it. Well, we've uh, certainly enjoyed it and can't wait to see Shogun and everything else that you have coming up uh, next. But I uh, really appreciate your time today and look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks a lot. Yeah, I appreciate you hopping on and I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Okay, Thank wonderful. You. Thank you so much. Okay, bye. Bye. bye.